The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman here on this uh, Tuesday, the 28th of November, almost wrapping up the month. And um, let me just start off with this because you know that I always look at the markets in terms of how does the market react to bad news? There's always bad news out there, but most of the time the market just ignores it. When it gets serious, that's when you get these sharp declines. Well, at this particular point, this little topping motion right here suggests to me, and I'm, I'm about to put this in, I have to wait for the end of the day, but I'm real close to putting a little rectangle there to say, I think from just at this point on the very short term, we're going to have to monitor to see if there's bad news. And the only bad news could be, and now I can go to the, to the so I call this the Chapman Wave Dark News Cloud Cover, <clears throat> using the Dow Daily Chart. Um, there was this whole wide range from November of 2022 all the way through to this most to the breakout in July of this year then we came down sharply and we made internal low and residual low and now we're getting real close to the slowing down of the upside momentum the slowing down so we haven't got there yet but I'm just saying what would constitute some kind of negativity that the market not the news media, but the market is taking the news to be market poor. Well, look, the Dow is stalling right here. It's had a fantastic move, 32,327 to 35,410. I mean, really, three, uh, over 3,000 points to the upside. So you can understand some kind of a breather is in place. It is... I wouldn't say needed. The market doesn't know it needs anything, but would be expected. And you've had the single leg A up, almost a one-to-one -to, -one to the upside from the Chapman Wave falling exclamation in the weekly chart. But look at this. So now let me show you what I'm looking at. We're at D in the Dow. Leg D, maybe a peak D today if there's no new recovery high. This is the daily chart. We're at in the S&P. We're already, we've made that peak D. Right here, it's a little cautionary action right now. So we're starting to pull back a little bit, but this is nothing. This is just like a, it's like an eye blink from what what happened, forty one oh three to the most recent high of forty five fifty. Uh, oh, it was sixty eight, forty five sixty eight. I mean, this is just nothing. And look at this massive move. There are so many leg A's to the upside here. And in this particular instance, if it goes above 46.07.07, .07, I really do have to call it a new buy signal. Um, that would be incredible. Um, all right, so now let's just go through this one at a time. So that's the S&P trading down 7 at 54, uh, 45.43. You've got the QQQ down just 53 cents at 388.64. Made a peak D at 393.07, second Four sessions to kind of consolidate. This is the fourth session, I should say. It's the third session from the most recent high, but even that was a consolidation session. Um, but it made a new recovery high. Yeah, it could be E, it could be E slash A. Don't worry about the weekly. Let's go one step at a time. IWM, not very good action at all. It's just been stuck. It's just not been a place to go to. iShares Russell 2000. I'm going to put that in with ARKK which is a little different chart pattern. It's made a new recovery high today. That's the ARK Innovation ETF. But look at that monthly. And look at that weekly. It's coming back from the weekly. But wow. I mean, what a hit from 125 down to the 29s. Here it is at 45. Pretty decent rally. But I'm watching this closely. It's getting a little toppy, but no technical sign yet of a pullback. It's a leg D. Now, what I wanted to show you is this. A Microsoft. Leg F, it could be an instant restart, but for now I'm calling it a leg F at a new all-time high. All the technicals are good. On balance volume is a clue to the fact that it's getting a little bit toppy. Uh, let me just go through IYT. That's the transportation index. Peak E pulling back a little bit. 
It's really important for the uh, transports to be moving higher. They don't have to make all-time highs, but they should be moving higher. They have moved higher. The weekly chart is so close to turning positive in the nine-period moving average over the 14, but it hasn't done that yet. And the monthly chart is just kind of stuck in a range. Um, look, e, we've got CRM, which is uh, Salesforce.com, coming out with earnings today. And is it today or either today? Yeah, I think it's today, maybe today or tomorrow. And where is it? It's at a leg D, maybe a peak D today. There are so many Ds. Um, ALB, I mean, Albemol. We got a message yesterday about, oh, no. Why did I put album? Oh, no. Album all is just something to look at. Uh, I have no interest in that. Look, ZS, Z Scaler. Is that what it's called? Z Scaler. Makes a leg D yesterday, and it drops today sharply down 527 for a possible peak D at a doji candle high. Um, this is, these are all on Investors Business Daily list, top, top 50. Uh oh, Q Y L S. I hope that's correct. I guess it's not. Q Y L S. Uh, Q, let me find it here. Don't want to waste time. Um, it's over here. Q L Y S. Q L Y S. You've got to put the symbols in correctly. P D, pulling back a little bit. This is Qualys Inc. detects vulnerabilities on all network assets, anything with uh, an IP address. Um, I can just go on and on. Uh, Elf, we spoke about Elf just recently, um, that was starting to bounce back after being a monthly PE, huge pullback from the 140s down to the uh, 80s. Um, nice move back um, right now. Uh, it's in leg D. I can just go on and on. And D, oh, I forgot to mention this. The whole reason why I'm mentioning the D is that in the Chapman methodology, the whole idea is to be able to get you from a starting point Right here, oh, I've got two of those. That's the one I want. The starting point <clears throat> to higher peaks, and at the fourth highest peak, peak A is the first, B is the second, higher peak C is the third, higher peak D, is other things can happen. That's where you can have your sharpest move, you can have your instant restart, you can go to EFG with an alternate count, G says C, that goes to A, blah, blah. But this is very important, buy signal to buy mode to a D. That's where other things can happen. Buy signal to buy mode in ALF, Elf Beauty, and there it is. Now, look at this. Where did I go? Did I type in the wrong place? I did. Now. I wasn't going to say now. Look at this. I'm going to say now. Look at now. Service now. Cloud auto management uh, workflows. IT service. Double top of the PD. Not a big pullback. All I'm saying is that this is where there's kind of a stalling action, and you can expect Maybe something else is going to happen. Uh, D U O L. These are all from Investors Business Daily. Uh, Duolingo Inc. Oops, let's get that right up there. Uh, so if there is a leg D, maybe a peak D today in the daily chart, leg D in the weekly, leg D in the monthly. But we can go on and on. So why am I? Why I'm just a little bit cautious here. We've set in place our first uh, short position, and that is because. If you look at um, the dollar, 102 was our target uh, as key support. Well, where are we right now? We at 100 and uh, we're at 102.99. We went down to 100 and I'm trying to find it. Well. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. The Gold Report As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Uh, while I'm looking at these Ds, uh, dude in the dead says, good morning, Basil, looking for a lot, an entry long position on AERS. I'm not sure about this. Look, this is crazy. 0.003. Mm, I don't know if I could even recommend this. Uh, I mean, I don't know whether you've got to book an appointment. Sometimes it doesn't even trade. Or maybe it's the wrong symbol, but you do say, remember TW? I certainly do. That was trade, I put in the den by mistake, trade trade web. Yeah, oh, look at this, fantastic. This is a peak D if there's no new high today. Uh, here we go, tap, tap. Leg C in the weekly chart, leg B in the monthly. 102.33 was the major high back in December 2021 or January 22. And then it plummets to half, I guess, Cut in half by 51.47. The low, I guess, it was in uh, October-ish, 2022. Now it's in leg leg B. I'm going to call this a blue B because the stochastic of the monthly is at 91%. And weekly is 96%. Daily is 88%. And it's got a leg D, maybe a PD today. So are you sure? Let me just check. A, ah, I thought you were looking at something different. <laughs> there was nothing to see there in that other. So A-R-E-S. Yeah, this is A-R-E-S. is. Um, Airs Management Corporation, I've seen this before, haven't done any analysis at all. Uh, where's an entry point? Is this in the real estate? Is this managing properties? I I kind of like the chart in this environment. Um, it's almost an all-time high, or at least most recent and yearly high. Um, I would get right here, 109.45. I would start, just to start, A, B... Yeah, okay, that is going to be, this is going to be brand new. Yes, I like it, A, B, a new high above 110 or 1, so I'll see. I, I would start a position right here, and I just have to give it the rest of the week until Friday because 107 is key support. If it pulls back to 108.20 uh, in the next couple of days, I'd say don't add to it, but looking at it, this is, 
I mean, there's nine people moving average over the 14 in the daily, nine over the 14 in the weekly, and fantastic. Look at this. This is a stock that if you got in just based on this one technique on the weekly chart, if you got in as it broke out on, in January, the week of the 13th of January, 2023, 77.68, I'll go to the high, not the low of 69, but 77, you'd be looking 30%. This is uh, uh, about a 40-something percent gain. So this is acting beautifully. It's getting a little tired, but hey, it's still looking really good. So yeah, nibble here. Next question. So um, I need to do this before I go anywhere else. I almost forgot. Um, let's see. Hi, Basil. Um, happy holidays. I never got out of SYM. That's symbolic stock. And now have a very nice gain. Thank you for turning me on to the stock. My well, question is, if you still owned it, and we're in around 32, where would you put your stop? I have a stop on half at 55.99, just under around number 56. That's not a bad idea. Um, and the other half just below today's low of 49.05. Um, do you think there is much upside from here? Thank you, Tim. Subscriber. So, yeah, we've had this for since 21, actually. And it went, so let me just go to Symbotic. S-Y-M. <coughs> Yeah, so Symbotic is trading at an, uh, another high, a recovery high, at 58.92 uh, points, uh, up 73 cents. So it gapped up on really good earnings. I've been talking about this. I spent, in fact, on this past Saturday in my hour-long, uh, every every weekend I give about an hour-long, uh, it's like almost like a, a webinar I give a video, I discuss all these things in great detail, where we are, what we're looking at, what we want to buy, and I've discussed Symbotic. We had, we, had, we had taken profits all the way up to almost the 64 high, and then on the way down when it was stalling, we tried to get in, and it just, it, it, I'd said, you know, this is one I, I kind of feel comfortable saying you could buy it without a stop, but how can you do that in this market? We've seen some stocks just get absolutely hammered if they make one little mistake. So I said, but this is in the right area, end-to-end -end AI, robotic warehouse automation systems. I love the stock. So I, I said, uh, take uh, if you haven't taken anything off, really take a little bit off. It's part of money management right now, and then let's decide what was happening. Now, I don't, I don't, what I am going to say is, if you can keep your core position, I think this stock is going to retest the 64.14 all-time high. Number one. Number two, it is absolutely in the right area of this particular economic phase. Robotic warehouse automation systems. I, I mean, this is, I love, I love the idea of this stock. So um, I, would, I would do nothing other than take a little bit off as you have now. The stock that you have at 59, oops, where was it? I'm sorry, at 55.99. Rather take something off. Look, you're giving up uh, two, maybe 50, 60, 56. Yeah, like like today, if you'd got out at, the, at about 57 uh, when I sent out the note in my newsletter to say, if you haven't taken anything off, take something off. You've already gone at more points than having that stop in place. Now, what I would say to you is, have patience. I like this, and if you haven't got, say, a full position. What I would do is I'd move a trading stop. You've taken something off, hopefully. Then I'd have a trading stop on a, on a fairly small position, make it a three-point trading stop. That will be hit at some point. But you know what? The way it's acting now, just like Microsoft. Look, we are long Microsoft from 338. Microsoft, look at this. It's trading at 381. It, this could turn into an instant restart. I'm, I'm going to circle that right now. If it's a leader of a group, the leaders are finding money managers coming to the end of the year wanting to be a participant in the leaders. They need to show it in their books. So these things are And the reason why uh, I didn't want for subscribers to actually short the Dow in any way today is because there are a couple of stocks like a Microsoft that are doing so well. So within that context, all I'm going to say is once you've taken a little bit off now, the next could be a trailing stop, and there you've resolved some of that. But I would try to keep as much as I can, other than the money management part of it, 
this because uh, that was symbolic. And it's the same thing here with Microsoft. We've taken little bits off. We had a fantastic trade the other day, uh, right here, I think it was, where I said, uh, buy on a pullback uh, to the 369 level or something like that, uh, which it did perfectly. And then instead of saying, have it, have, which I usually do, but I thought, oh, it was up so high. It was up in the three, 373 level, 376. I thought, what on earth am I thinking here? But anyway, we got it. But then intraday, you remember at 3 o'clock, there was that news about the AI guy who was uh, kicked out or whatever it was. Um, and it dropped sharply. So it took us out of that position, which had a fabulous, really quick extra profit that we uh, that we had put back from the tads we took off. Um, and here we are. So you got to keep your position, your core position of stocks that are looking fantastic. Um, and so with that said, um, yeah, so the reason why I'm, I'm thinking the Dow still has some, even though it's in leg D and the others are the ones, like the SPY, that needs one little pop to the upside. If I mean, it could doesn't have to have it. But look at the SMHs. The SMHs made a peak C1, and I call this a peak C2 because it acted exactly like a, like a D, and therefore I'm ready to say, ah, now the semi's going to have a bit of a pullback. Dow's up 34. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year d-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors you might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Well, how important is a peak D? Here's the weekly chart of CFLT, Confluent Inc. A hits the 200 period moving average, can't hold it, 
pulls back in the weekly chart and does a one-to-one -to, -one to the left side with the price, the, the plumb line right here at the peak C to within, it's a week late, I mean, week early, and it plummets down below uh, 15. And now it's holding, and the question is, could I look at it? Um, look, when a stock gaps down huge from, say, 28 down to the 16s, gets cut, I mean, eight points, uh, <laughs> 28, 16, or it gets cut uh, by about 42%, and then gaps up, forgets about the 14.69. So I want you to do this. I don't know if I have time to do it right now. Is this a Chapman wave? Okay, price, volume, climax, low. That's the volume. Yeah, okay. So I'm not going to do anything with that now. I, I'll do it tomorrow. I'm just going to say the fact that it gapped up, it hasn't filled the gap, and it's moving high. It says, you guys made a terrible mistake. I, I'm doing okay. I don't know what you're talking about. But that's a huge gap to fill. So it's doing very nicely now. I suspect that this is the point. Just I'm doing this by eye. 2240 is really the from anyway from 2240 down is kind of excess of what should have happened. Now I'm going to say 2240, 22, just over 22, 2201 um, is, is excess and it's working its way back there. When it gets there, it's probably going to come back down again. But I do think that it's attempting to break to a leg C above uh, 20.55, the high of the 15th of November. Uh, and that's where you've got to start being a little careful. It's getting to an area that says the sellers are still determined, but the buyers are saying it was overdone. They've had their say for one, two, three, five, seven, eight, nine, nine, twelve, about 22 days. And uh, the bears want to come back in. It's got a little bit of strength left. I think it will make that leg. See, I'm not sure about a D. Okay, next question came in is, where was, no, the question wasn't your question, it was mine. Oh, let me just finish up here because SHOT, we spoke about it yesterday. Uh, we had Safety SHOT Inc. AIDS, it aids in alcohol breakdown and recovery. Uh, we had, um, yesterday we had Garrod talking about it and he uses a couple of techniques, technique I'd spoken. He, he reminded me that I, I introduced him to the uh, SAR, okay, let me just show you. The SAR is the SARS, this is called, right here, the full title is uh, the parabolic SAR, okay? So we were talking about this, and I, I gave him, I can't, I don't know what he did with it, but it was at our 10 o'clock time frame, it was right here, it was pulling back, I said this is going to be the uh, key support level, but if it starts to make higher highs, and it can get back, to um, three dollars. Oh, am I going to remember exactly what it was? That was three. I think I said you can get to three thirty-eight, then three forty, and three forty-two, and start to make higher highs. That would be really good. But it did just that. It had a fantastic session. And now let's look at the daily chart. Daily chart, right here. Why did that move? Oh, there it is. So here's the daily chart. So we were talking about it right there. So it had a beautiful session. It went. It was 450 was the high yesterday, if I remember correctly. Today's high is 4, uh, and then the end of the day was 485. Now it's pulled back. So, Gary, you were absolutely correct. I hope you held that at least part of it, because that's what we said part of it you should hold. Um, but great move, good eye. So that's that. Now let me just go back to what I was saying. Why am I saying just be a little cautious here because – even though we're only at a D and so many other things are happening. Look, the dollar, 102, let me just pull this back a little bit right here. Right. So the 102 right there, that is the August the 30th low of 102.94. I said that's something that that would be a target on the downside. Price time match says that it should come in. This is a daily chart tomorrow. It came in today. This is that left side, right side price time match from the plumb line, which I said I'm not taking from the top. The technique that I use is if it's extending to the right, I use the cup. If there's a retest of the high, I make the bottom of the cup 
And that's exactly what I was using. So here we are. So, so the dollar is, look, the stochastic's at 10%. The, the MACD is very weak, but the histogram is improving a little bit. The nine period is very ugly under the 14. But this is an area I said, there's a chance that if we get there, from here we can have a bit of a bounce, like a dreaded H pattern. 103.67 is the nine period moving average, and 104.22 is the 14 period moving average. And there could be a bounce. And as it does that, there was a chance I had said that gold, which is up now 14 points at 2047, I don't know if the C1, C2 is now a leg D or if this is really a C, but I, I'm suspecting that gold is looking really good. But at the same time, I think that this is getting a little toppy if I do it, at, say, on the 120-minute chart. So I wouldn't be surprised if we are – whoops, did I need to do that? I wouldn't be surprised if we're getting very close to a dollar bounce, a gold – a bit of a pullback. I'm still calling this a B in the weekly chart. That's really positive. And I'm looking at the TLT at a peak F. Maybe there's an instant restart. Yes, yeah, so this is an F slash B. But just getting to uh, the, the, all the sanguineness, sanguineness, all the sanguity that I'm hearing about yields coming down and that maybe the Fed's going to... I think in the interim, we're going to have a little bit of a surprise. I think that what the Fed looks at, or they look at numbers, and what we can see on the market, because we're looking at charts which give us a much, we give, get the real, the real thing today. They have a look-back period, so we can project out. They're not allowed to project out. They have to see what the evidence is. My suspicion is they're a little bit behind, and that they're still looking at the chance that they might want to raise rates still. Um, and that just says to me, that yields will come down, but I think we're going to be trapped in another trading band. And if that's the case, a little surprise any time this week, that's what we've got to be ready for. But to get, look, the nine period moving average is so strong, it means that yields, the uh, TLT, iShares 20 year treasury bond ETF, would have to really start trading under 88. And it's a 91 right now, that's three points. That's a long way to go. But any any surprise to the downside from here says just be ready because this market is just a – it's very selective. Now, I mean, even – look, let's just go to DKNG, something uh, – a stock that we've been wanting to get for ages, missed a chance the other day, and then spiraled up. Where did it go to? A D instead of PD. A D in the monthly, a D in the weekly, a G stash C in, in, in the weekly, sorry, D in the daily. With three doji candles and a big pullback today, down a dollar twenty-eight at thirty-seven forty-eight. I, I, all I can say is I'm trying to put the package together to say why or when will we get a pullback. And right now, I just see a, a kind of a a breather. I think a breather. And uh, we're well, leg D. Where the GDX? GDX broke above away from the two hundred period moving average. Nice action, but it is a leg D. I'll be back in a moment. Downs of 40. This is down 390. I'll be back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? 
Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold. Traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi folks, that's a nice big spike that you've got in the E-mini right now. Look at that, went right through the 200 degree moving average of both the five minutes and the 10 minutes. I'm not sure what the news is. I'm looking at you. Let me just go to this to show you something very interesting. Um, <clears throat> we're talking about PDs. So where are we here in this PDD in the den? Someone said, uh, boy, you were right. Um, this is going to one person to the other. PDD could do 80 million shares traded today, ripping up to high prices. I'll keep an eye out for a buy to trade on a retracement. Thanks. So this is the, the Frank talking to uh, uh, G-Bolt. So look at this. PDD gaps up where? In a leg D. Uh, look at the monthly chart, peak A, peak B, peak C, leg D. So it's important. Look at the, the, stock, we were, the stock we were looking at just a moment ago uh, in the um uh, this is the shorter term time frame shot what did it do yesterday in the 10 minute chart a peak d so those fourth highest peaks are really important so let's just go to the dow right now because as i said with microsoft so strong i i didn't think that the dow was an appropriate thing to look at for any short position at this particular stage so it's the dow has made a new recovery high of 34 5,449. So far, that is really good action, right? And what we are looking at here, I just wanted to go through this to show you how this January falling axe formation uh, works. So we have this pattern where it goes to a higher high, usually a D, E, or F, and then it pulls back sharply. It doesn't have to be there, but that happens so often. Then it pulls back, it makes an arch formation. You make lower highs and much lower lows. And then all of a sudden, it seems to want to form some kind of a, a base, and it does this. So here it is. Here's the pattern. It goes up, straight line. Then it comes down, lower highs and much lower lows, and then it holds. All of a sudden, it makes either this V-shape or a cup-shaped formation, and it wants to take out that declining trend line. If it does, all the peaks on the left side become upside targets. Well, lo and behold, look what happened. It took that out. This is the Chan Wave Falling Axe Formation. It went through the Chan Wave Inside Track Repellent Zone, became a Propellent Zone. So from this level to the breakout line, I do a one-to-one -one expansion. Usually there's a pullback, and I take it, and I go one step at a time. In this case, it was so sharp, 
I just put it in there, and here's the one to one to the upside in angle. Isn't this incredible angle? It's almost a vertical angle. It's like 90, about 92%. Um, maybe not. It's hard to tell. Oh, where's my protractor? I don't have it in front of me. All right, so it's a it's a really sharp. So it says that this level right here of 35.656 would test the recent high of August the 4th at 35,679. So as I'm looking at it right now, this is a gray A until it breaks above that. Because it's the starting point was at 31,429, uh, 31, I have to consider that, sorry, th actually the starting point was 28,660 in October. That's, we actually been long and still long the diamonds from that level. Um, but the most recent one took us from this level at 31,420. It didn't break it. It went down to 32,327. So that just says that I have to now consider that if it goes above 35,679, I'm going to call this F slash A. F says, hmm, be careful. A says, are you kidding? Every single pullback you want to just buy, buy, buy. So those are the decisions we have to make. And finally, the stochastic in the weekly chart, the week is not finished, it's just begun, is at 80%. That's a good sign. The MACDs expanded with a very wide aperture between the nine-period differential, 26-period moving average. So that's the way I want to. Someone asked me about, could you explain what this means? It's the one-to-one -one falling X formation expansion to the upside as a target. All right? But on the way, I'm anticipating there'll be some kind of a pullback, maybe before we get there, although we're already at 35,465, 200, less than 220 away from the previous high. We could do that in an eye blink. But I think it, that's something to keep in mind, right? So this goes here. The plus, I always put a plus sign above a D as a warning. You've already got to that level. So we'll see. Look, the MACD is good. The 9's over the 14. Price is way over the 14 in the Dow. The uh, stochastic is at 96% and flat. Let's see where the S&P is. Is at 94% and basically flat, but just pulling back a little bit. Yeah, it's a nice little candle right here. Watch this very closely. Um, okay. So I, bun I did a bunch of those things. A uh, question came in. Uh, silver. Yeah, silver is acting well up 18 cents at 25,222. So you remember what I said? With this, So this gets smoothed out. So the prices are all moving around because I don't have it. It isn't automated. I have to do it by hand. So there was your peak D. Now we're in a new leg. I think it's still leg B. I don't think it's an F slash B. I think it's a B. But in the meantime, the weekly chart... Now let's go to our resistance levels right there. It's used this inside track repellent zone as a springboard this week to go higher. That month, The monthly chart is finally improving because it really was looking like an arch formation. So silver's a little stronger than gold. <clears throat> was asked about high-grade copper. High-grade copper is having a nice move. It's stalling right at the 200-period uh, exponential moving average, made a peak D, and it's pulling back from the D right there. Uh, but still, the technicals are improving. Stochastics at 78. I prefer 80%. And the monthly chart is finally testing the resistance level and the 200-period moving average. So if high grade copper, let's look at um, SCCO. I haven't updated that for a while. Of course, I oh, haven't got any notation whatsoever. Of course, you know that I've done this ever since I ever heard about it. So this is a peak, a peak A. B, another A, B, C. This is your starting point. Here's your up arrow in the monthly chart right here. So this is anything above that gets counted as a peak. So right here. So this, ah, let me just show it to you. I'll do it. So this is A, uppercase on the way up. This is B, even though it's by a fraction. But underneath it, with your starting point, where's the next peak? It's right here. So that's an A. That's a B, and you've already got to a C. So it doesn't matter that it went lower. From this level, the next highest peak is right here. I think that's just a double top. Let's just check it. I, my eye says 78, 76. 
78, oh, 65. So there's a D, E, and it's got an, already got to an F. D, oh, wait, no, that's not above. So this is the D, right here, D, and it's gotten to an E. This is, the, this is SCCO, this is Southern Copper. So it's pulled back sharply. So you can see it's a real mixed picture in the copper area. Um, uh, copper, copper, copper. Um, so let's go to TGB. I always get asked about this one. It's always on my list as well. Nah, it's not doing very much. So don't stop saying, you know, we're just okay. Let's look at wood. This is the iShares Global Timber and there you go. iShares Global Timber and Forestry ETF. Go on to D, sort of stall there, right there. And the weak chart is in an E. No, yes, an E. So um, I'm doing a little bit better than copper, actually. I'll be back. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Just real quickly, X XPEV, Expand Inc. designs, develops, manufactures smart EVs, Chinese company. I think that it's gone to a peak and it's pulling back just a little bit, but all the technicals are still good. Um, if it's able at any point in the next week and a half to get to 19 point, 19.98, then that 200 period moving average of 21.18, that 21s becomes a magnet, but it needs to get there. So that's what I'd be watching. Uh, and a question about the dollar, is there more downside to the dollar? I'm, I don't see why there shouldn't be more downside to the dollar. 
But I also don't see any reason why in this area above 101, maybe that's a touch 100. No, nah, 100.43 is the 200 period exponential moving average. I don't think that's in the cards just yet. I do think it's going to go there. But at the same time, what we're looking at is at this moment exactly, uh, yields are going to be the issue. The dollar finding support, gold is a little bit more to go, but it's very close to getting just a little bit overbought, so it needs to have a bit of a breather. Maybe the 1984 200-period moving average <clears throat> becomes a magnet if it closes under 2,000 even just once. Um, it's still very strong, acting well, up 18 right here. So within that context, I'd be watching that, but I'm also – and crude oil. Crude oil is um, – Right here, trying to find some kind of support to try to get at 76, uh, 62, trying to get up above 78. So that's the 200 period moving average. If in the next week it can actually climb to 81, that'll be important. I'm just saying a little choppiness here, a little bit kind of overbought and very selective. Now, of course, if you do get fund buying coming in, end of the month, beginning of the month, thank um, I, it's, it's rotational and if it continues to be rotational the best of the best will hold up well and the ones that are showing some weakness will slide. I'll be back with Tom a little later and say to for Steve and the other hosts it'll be a great day for listening to everyone I'll be back a little later with Tom check out my opening call daily newsletter see you later